Uh, we've got some incipient lesions. Um, like I was saying before, this right here on the mesial of number 19, I'm not sure if you can see it, this little white spot right here, down there. It shows up well on the x-rays or radiolucency, but it's not past the DEJ, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And um, we're gonna make sure we get that thing situated. Jessica's gonna floss with a little toothpaste, fluoridated toothpaste, and help remineralize that area. This was a Frank class two lesion here. I'm just gonna get the remnants of any decay there. That's a really nice and uh, solid, looks good. Now what I'd also like to do uh, when I have a proximal box like this is create a little undercut. So I have a little bit more uh, physical resistance against a composite coming out if she should eat some uh, sticky foods. Ah. So way on the bottom, I'm gonna just give a little bit of a trapezoidal <laughs> adjustment down here like that. So we're not just dealing with uh, chemical uh, adhesion. I'm gonna extend this just a little bit, make sure we got all the decay out. And that's looking good, nice and solid. So we use a laser on this and got that situated primarily. And then all the other mushy stuff we took care of with the uh, round burr. Okay, now for these restorations, I like to use this uh, physiologic um, matrix. This is what I call a garrison system. It's not flat like the regular Toffelmeyer. So what I like to do also is kind of like contour. This is not a big fat molar. So I'm going to contour this so it's a little bit uh, smaller because we're dealing with a premolar. I'm going to seat it here. The most important thing here is it needs to go past the bottom of the proximal box. So make sure I can see. I don't want any bleeding in this situation, so I want to maintain it like that. And then we're going to use a, um, a wedge to keep it in position. done with that so I'm turning that off okay and position it and what I'll do is like this little lip right here okay. I'll push that down to stabilize it you can feel some pressure here Jessica a little something here like that pressure close your mouth just a little bit thanks Now, a lot of times I will um, do this in a way that is uh, what I call pre-wedged. So that's a tight contact, so I'm gonna get a smaller uh, wedge in there. And when you pre-wedge, you can actually get the teeth separated a little bit even before you put your band in there. So once you put your band in there and you put your restoration, when you take the band off, you should have a nice tight contact. There's not gonna be a big highway where you're gonna get food entrapment. So this is a little bit too thick for her. I, I don't know, it's not too bad. Let me see here, just bring it down a little bit. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay, so we got that, and the other thing uh, that we need to do is make sure we control moisture. Thanks. Raise your tongue up over that cotton. That's looking good. So, we got that. Then the next thing we want to do is do our etch. Primarily, you get most of the bond from the enamel. Um, I think it's like two bucks. What? 
Okay. I'm going to get that down here in the enamel. The dentin is kind of like secondary. Make sure though that carries this out. And whatever's on the dentin, I leave it on there just for a shorter period of time because most of the etching we want on the enamel. Okay, I can do that. That's that. Now, this system is really fantastic for getting a really nice tight contact. And then we use this ring. You can feel some pressure with this. And the ring goes over like so. So we got primary separation with the wedge, but with the ring, we even get more separation. So that's looking really great. And then we can proceed. We got a nice uh, dry field going with our uh, adhesion, our peak. And because this is a little deep, I'm going to uh, put a little bit of glass ionomer there. It'll give it a little bit more insulation and help protect the pulp because it's kind of deep. Like that. And then uh, go ahead and like cure that. Gonna thin out the adhesion, the, the peak, because we don't want a pool of that stuff. We just want a real thin layer. Just like that. Make sure it's nice and cured. Instead of just proceeding with the composite, the first thing I want to do is just at least check that we have polymerization of this material. That looks good. Okay, so we got that. So we can proceed with our restorative material. Okay, so I'm gonna get the proximal floor with this flowable and get the sides situated. And when I place the cannulas in there, I don't want any bubbles. So I'm gonna to try to get on the sides like that and lift it out like that and make sure that everything is contoured, is adapted to the walls. So it's still nice and flowable. Make sure this right next to the walls like that. Make sure I'm under these areas that are undercut. I got the decay out, so I got that situated. Then proceed and uh, cure it. And I don't like to put a whole bulk in there at one time because every little layer you can get optimal polymerization just by building it up gradually. There's no rush. You doing like, okay? She's doing fine. I think she's a great she's a great lady. Okay, now check that. Make sure it's nice and polymerized, looking good. And what I do is I got, you know, Jessica and I uh, discussed um, the rationale for uh, Cleansing the teeth. We got a little biofilm. You can see a little redness, a little gingivitis there. That can be remedied by using the soft bristled brush angled toward the gum line and massaging it in there at a 45 degree angle. So, Jessica, we could uh, think about doing a little selfie and just see how those gums are going to be in better tone. It should look like an orange rind with little tiny pits in it. But when it gets smooth and round and puffy or kind of purplish, that's another sign of gingivitis. Hmm. There we go. And build up this contour. I don't put too much in there because the more you p composite you put in there, then there's more time you gotta spend uh, trimming it. 
So, and then if I do see a, like a little contour that I want to adjust while it's still wet, I could probably use this Explore and make sure it's not going past the cavo surface onto the lingual or the buckle. And then I'll go ahead and cure. So this occlusal, that's a class one uh, with a indirect pulp cap with the uh, glass ionomer, ionosil. I just love that material, it's just easy to use. And this is a class two for tooth number 20. We took four bite wings today. So we do see several incipient lesions and I, I trust that we won't have to go after each and every one, you know? Okay, so we got that done. And so the next step would be to take the ring off. We don't need the wedge anymore. See, and that's got some nice resistance, so that was giving us some separation. Now, this is the proof of the pudding. This thing is not just uh, lifting off because it's in there tight. And as you see how skinny that, that matrix band is. So I gotta work with it just to get it out, which is really nice. Getting it out like that. You got a little red there, a little bit of uh, bleeding because it was next to the gingiva. That's not a big deal. And then um, what you can do is uh, trim it back, but you just, uh, just relax your jaw for a moment, okay? Just close for a moment. You can stop it for now.